Did you know only two fully operational space stations are floating in the Earth's orbit? One is the International Space Station, or ISS, and the other is the Chinese Tiangong Space Station. However, the ISS, which was long known to be the home of astronauts in orbit, will shortly be destroyed. So what will happen to all the space exploration and research? In this video, we will take you on an express journey and tell you when it's going to happen, why this has been planned, and what lies ahead for NASA. So, if you want to know about the fate of the most expensive structure ever built, then stay with us till the end. I'm sure you've watched those videos from the International Space Station, with astronauts floating around showing glimpses of their daily lives up in space, how they eat food, sleep, and work in microgravity. For us, it's fascinating but for them, it's their workplace. Since the inaugural module was launched in 1998, the ISS has been a symbol of our never-ending curiosity about space. Thanks to ISS, there has been a continuous human presence in space after the first long-term residents docked from the Baikonur Cosmodrome spaceport operated by Russia in Kazakhstan in 2000. As of now, a total of 240 astronauts from 19 different countries have been aboard. The station has served as an observatory and extraterrestrial lab for thousands of experiments in astrobiology, astronomy, meteorology, physics, and other fields. Other than that, its presence has led to several spin-off products that we use in our daily lives. What? You didn't know that? Well, we have a whole video on that on our channel, so check it out. The ISS is by far the most expensive thing ever built. The development, assembly, and operating expenses of such a huge project are about $150 billion. To put this colossal investment into perspective, the United States has contributed an estimated $96 billion, nearly equal to the entire cost of all Apollo missions combined. But NASA isn't the only country with stakes in the project. Five other space agencies, representing 15 countries, are also involved in it, like Russia's Roscosmos, Japan's JAXA, Europe's ESA, and Canada's CSA. The International Space Station is a massive engineering accomplishment, composed of multiple interconnected modules and components. These include pressurized laboratory modules for scientific research, living quarters for the crew, solar arrays for power generation, and docking ports for spacecraft arrivals. The station's backbone is a truss structure that supports various external components, including radiators and communication systems. Each module serves a specific purpose, creating a microgravity environment where astronauts live and conduct experiments, contributing to our understanding of space and science. Fun fact, the ISS completes a full rotation around the Earth in just 90 minutes, thanks to its 17,500 miles per hour speed. Another fact you may find interesting is that the crew on board get to see 16 sunrises and sunsets every day. But now, after 23 years in space, the sun of this extraordinary space station is going to set for the last time soon. As of right now, the International Space Station is scheduled for destruction by the end of 2030. The ISS is on a trajectory to conclude its cosmic chapter with a planned retirement at the end of the decade. The plan is to deorbit it, bring it back into Earth's atmosphere, and carefully crash it into the ocean. This decision has been a consensus among key space players, including NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, and the European Space Agency. However, the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, is planning an exit as early as 2028. The space station weighs 800,000 pounds and spans 358 feet in width, so it poses a significant challenge for a conventional descent into Earth's atmosphere. In other words, it can't just vanish completely upon re-entering. So to make sure that no surviving fragments end up causing harm on Earth's surface and create any space debris, NASA has outlined a careful plan, which is to deploy a spacecraft to guide the ISS into a re-entry trajectory over the South Pacific Ocean. This whole destructive maneuver is going to cost another billion dollars. 
Even though the ISS enjoys support from international collaborators such as Canada, Japan, and Europe, there has always been a unique partnership between the United States and Russia. Initially, NASA explored the idea of using multiple Russian Progress spacecraft for the deorbiting maneuver. However, recent geopolitical tensions after the Russian invasion of Ukraine have seriously strained this collaboration. One thing that shouldn't be strained is hitting the like button. So please do so if you like the content and also subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you. Now let's continue. If you remember, we told you that Russia's Roscosmos is one of the partners in the ISS program. Now, their Director General Dmitry Rogozin has suggested that Russian withdrawal might lead to the ISS deorbiting due to a lack of reboost capabilities. What's that? Well, the ISS is continuously flying around the Earth and needs regular reboosts to overcome the effects of atmospheric drag that causes it to lose about 330 feet of altitude in a day. A Russian spacecraft known as the Progress spacecraft has been primarily responsible for providing the necessary boost for the station to maintain its altitude in orbit. But since relations of the U.S. haven't been the best with Russia, working together on ISS has also taken its toll. Dmitry Rogozin has even said that they would work together only if the sanctions placed on Russia are lifted. But NASA, in response, has other plans in case this cooperation does end. A U.S. corporation, Northrop Grumman, has offered reboost capabilities if the need does arise. But one thing is for sure, and that's the aging space station will be decommissioned by 2031. NASA has already announced a planned date of January 2031 to deorbit the ISS. It will surely be the end of an era of human collaboration that outlasted wars and conflicts. So, what's next then? The Russians have decided to go their own way, and the successor of ISS is already underway. NASA has teamed up with companies like SpaceX and Boeing and outsourced the responsibility of human transportation into outer space. Contracts worth hundreds of millions of dollars are being handed out to companies to craft next-gen space stations for scientific research or even space tourism, keeping our presence alive in orbit. A company called Axiom Space has already been into space on SpaceX rockets and within a couple more years plan to attach modules to the ISS. This shift allows NASA to redirect the $3 billion annual ISS budget towards other space missions like revisiting the Moon and eventually Mars through the Artemis program. That's right, folks. Humans haven't been to the Moon since the 1972 Apollo 17 mission. In 2024, Astronauts will orbit the moon for the first time after more than 40 years. There's even a lunar landing scheduled for 2025. NASA also dreams of building a new space station near the moon called Lunar Gateway with the help of international collaboration. Meanwhile, Airbus and Voyager Space are joining forces for the construction of Starlab, a commercial ISS successor. Voyager Space has even won a $160 million contract from NASA to develop Starlab, which is expected to be launched into orbit in 2028. In other news, NASA has also awarded another $130 million to Blue Origin founded by Jeff Bezos and $126 million to Northrop Grumman to develop their own space station projects. So, looks like it's going to be very commercial out there. But here's the kicker there is still a possibility that the ISS won't completely be destroyed. Some companies are suggesting that deorbiting the entire station and dumping it in the ocean would be such a waste. The prospect of dropping such a colossal and vital structure into the ocean raises concerns about resource utilization. So recycling materials like melting metal or repurposing ISS modules could be a more sustainable choice. Although NASA hasn't officially accepted this idea, there's room for reconsideration as we are approaching the deorbiting deadline. Only time will tell. The shutting down of the ISS, which has been a part of our lives for such a long time, is of course sad. But at the same time, it opens up the door for the possibility of new, smaller space stations taking its place, ensuring that humanity's presence in Earth orbit continues on. That's it for today's video. I hope you learned something today. Are you interested in space? What do you think humans will achieve in space in the next 10 years? Tell us in the comments. Also, please show your appreciation by clicking on that like button 
and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos. In the end, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again in another video very soon.